What's going on, everyone? If you are anything like me, and you just found out about the amazing power of keeping everything in an RSS feed, not just blogs, then you might also be going crazy for Newsboat right now. A couple other Linux YouTubers are starting to hit Newsboat content right now. It just happened to time, time itself perfectly. But um, something I ran across is some people might not know how to easily convert all of your YouTube channels to RSS feeds because you can do this. Um, some people thought they were limited to 15 or some arbitrary number, and this is not true. You can easily export everything from YouTube. And using a little bit of Vim magic, you can actually clean these up, toss them right into your newsboat config, and or your URLs, and you're good to go. So here's the, the link that would be a YouTube um, RSS feed. You'd have all of this text right here, and that would be your RSS feed for your videos. And I've talked about some of these flagging things um, before. I'm gonna go over everything else like this at length in my next video. I've discovered a lot of new things, um, but for now I'm just gonna show you how to get all of your YouTube subscriptions, format all of them, and put them all in Newsboat in a single batch. And this is what I did for mine, and it only took me a few minutes, and this is again why Vim and Vim macros are just amazing. So to get started, we need to go to YouTube. So the URL we want to go to is youtube.com slash subscription, if I could spell, subscription underscore manager. This is one of those menus that's really difficult to get to, but you can just type out this easy URL, subscription underscore manager. You're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom, and my face is covering it, but you can see like export to RSS reader. You're going to export your subscriptions. It's gonna give you a download file of an XML document. Okay, I'm gonna put that in downloads, save, cool. We're at, we're off to the races now. So in downloads, we have this giant document and there's no syntax highlighting. It's uh, a, uh, the file type is not set. So let's actually set the file type. So we just do colon, actually I'll turn on screen keys. So let me move my face over there. So we're going to put colon set file type equal to XML. And we'll get some level of arbitrary syntax highlighting. Um, this is actually an OPML document. Um, not quite sure what that means, but it doesn't really matter for what we're gonna be doing. So here's where Vim saved me so much time. I have like somewhere upwards of 180, 200 YouTube subscriptions. I've gone through this, I pruned it. I, I just have that many people I'm subscribed to. So getting each of these feeds out of this Excel document or God forbid, doing it manually, going to each channel and grabbing the URL, which before I was really familiar with this system was what I was doing before on my Windows machine. Pity past me, but now I just do a little bit of Vim magic and I'm good to go. So I did this all with macros. Um, and it's gonna take me a little bit because I forgot exactly what I typed, but you'll see the process of how quickly it is to just come up with this stuff on the fly once you're just a little bit familiar with Vim macros and the Vim motions. So each of these items starts with a, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, each of these items starts with a outline tag. So we don't need um, we don't need this top line. We don't need this body tag. We only need the outlines. Cool. So now I'm going to go in a little bit because now we're going to begin searching for the outlines. We want to break every line at the first occurrence of an opening outline tag. 
So I'm going to start a macro, which you start with Q, Q A, just put the macro in the A register. I'm going to do forward slash to search for opening brace or opening angle bracket, outline, enter, and it takes me to the beginning of that outline. I can do I to insert and enter to break the line. And that will do it. That's it. So now I can just escape and then I am going to test to make sure this works. I think because I scrolled, it might have messed it up. I might have to re-record. But Q and at A. How did it work? Worked just fine. Right on. So now let's just run this mm, 150 times. 150 at A. Ah, so it is broken. Well, I'm kind of screwed right now. I have to wait for this. Or did it? Okay, it did actually end. So again, this is like where you have to like, you know, figure out what uh, what breaks, what's broken, what's not. Um, how can we do this? How can we do this? So we can break it at the beginning of the outline tag, but we also need to get away from that tag and be away from the beginning of it. Otherwise, it's going to find itself and continually break the line at itself, which is what it was doing. So let's re-record. I'm going to start out of the outline tag, QA, re-record in the A register, find, outline, enter. It It's behind my face, but it took me there. I, enter, there's a new line break, escape, insert mode, and let's go word, word, word. Now we're outside and it's going to find the next one, Q, to end the macro. Now let's do 150 at A. And you're going to see it do its thing. It's going to just going to make a very long list. It's slow because I'm screen casting, but you can see the little relative number count popping up over here. It's actually breaking each of these things into its own individual line. This is step one. So then we'll just have a group of similar, similar, similarly structured records. And from there, we can start pulling out the necessary information that we actually care about. But I mean, I'm just watching this do its thing right now. I don't have to do anything. This is one of the things I love most about Vim. And one of the things that really sold me on this editor is just the, the Vim motions, but also, um, let's do 30 more, but also just the macros. Like I could just figure out a uh, task and how to do it with Vim motions, uh, set it to a macro and run that macro 150 times. And that's all I have to do. <laughs> One, two, three, four, three. Let's do three at A. Mm, looks like one more. Yeah, one more. All right. So then I'm going to delete the other crap I don't care about. And we just have the records for outline. Awesome. Now we are in business. Indent that one. I want them all similar. I don't want any indenting. Uh, it's going to be, an, it's being a pain right now because I'm screen casting. There we go. Sometimes weird indenting messes with it. All right, so now everything is structured in a useful way. This top line you can see, um, this is just like the header, YouTube subscriptions, YouTube subscriptions. We don't need that, delete that too. And now we are left with just our unique records. I'm gonna move my face. Uh, actually, that's not really a good place to put it. Um, so what do we want? What we want is the name in the text field here, and we want the XML URL. Those are the things that we want. So we're gonna start shifting everything towards the right, because in Newsboat, what you want is you want everything 
uh, in just a single row of the link not quoted and then all of your quoted tags and metadata for that link. So the first thing I want to do, what do I want to do? Hmm. I want to go to the end of the line, find the double quote, and delete everything after it. So it would just be a open string. So let's do that. So I'm going to do QA because again, I already did everything the QA macro was doing is now done. We can reuse it. I typically just do this. I'll just rewrite over the same macro and then just keep doing that until I need like an additional one. So that's just what I do. So let's do, let's go dollar sign. We're at the end of the line, capital F find the double quote and enter. Actually, that's, let's redo this because I couldn't even see. So uh, QA, start record, dollar sign, go to the end of the line, capital F, find the double quote, capital D, delete everything after it and including it. And I'm gonna go capital F, find the double quote. And then I'm going to delete that too. Excellent, we now have a unquoted link to our RSS feed. So now what do I wanna do? I wanna to go to the next line, I wanna to go to the beginning, so I can repeat the whole process. And Q, to, un to stop the macro. I have 188 records, so I can run this uh, 187 at A, and I can relax. And this is going to look very, very pretty for a while, but it is going to basically scrub all of these links and have just this plain text. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the text name of the field or the YouTuber, and we're going to put that as the metadata of what to call this link in Newsboat at the end of this. And then after that, you can always just add your own metadata. What I typically do is I'd say, where did this RSS feed come from? It came from YouTube, so I typically will just double quote it, add parens, and then put the source of the content after the in the parens. So we're done with that. So we can go back to the top. All right. So now what do we want to do? So here's where we get a very long macro because now we can just get it all done in a single go. And this is the fun stuff. So I'm going to do, again, QA. I'm going to find, I'm at the beginning of the line. I'm going to find the first double quote because that has the data I want. So I'm going to go F, double quote, V, F, double quote. So now I'm visually selecting both of these double quotes. I can now yank. I can now go to the end of the line by doing dollar sign. I can do P to paste. And as long as I can format one line perfectly the way I want to, because everything's structured the same way, if it works on one line, it'll work on every single other line. So now I've pasted it. This is not perfect yet. I'm gonna go F double quote. I, give me a space, escape. I'm gonna go F double quote, A. Give me the tilde. So now this RSS feed is gonna be named after this person. Escape, capital A to enter insert mode at the end or append. And then if I put a space, double quote, paren, U, tube, paren, double quote. That is what I want, escape. And now we're gonna do this. I'm going to go to the beginning of the line zero. I'm going to forward slash search for XML. Okay. Now I'm at there because that's a unique thing to find in the line. It jumps me right where I want. I can then do F to the equal sign. Enter. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Oh well, I'm in the middle of the big macro. I'm just going to redo it. So I'm going to go to um, the previous line. And let's hope I didn't just screw up my macro here. XML, enter, F equals, I forgot you just do that. And you don't press enter. So V, zero, X to delete. And we now have a formatted line. And then I'm gonna go 
down to the next line to be ready to do this macro again. Q. Let's hope I didn't screw it up. At A. Aha, it does skip a line though. So that does mean I need to need to redo this because now you can see it, it jumped a line. But that is how quickly this macro will work. So let me refine this one more time and walk you all through it so you can see what I'm doing. And we will hopefully get it perfect this time. And this is exactly what I did to get mine formatted exactly how I want it. So I'll just type it out. You can see the screen keys. I already went over this once, but you're going to be able to see the Vim motions that I'm doing. And I'll try and talk about it a little bit, a little bit. So, all right. I want to find double quote, visually select to the next double quote, yank it, go to the end of the line, paste it, find the previous double quote, enter, insert, give me a space, exit, insert, enter, uh, exit. I want to find the double quote, append a tilde, exit to normal, and then I want to add at the end, append space in YouTube, escape. I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the line. I'm going to forward search for XML, enter F equals, visually select zero, delete it start at the new line Q. So now let's do this 180 times. <laughs> 180 at A. And I think it should just, yeah, it's just, it's going to have to process. Uh, oh, it looks like I did screw up something. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what it is? You know what it is. I have my uh, HJKL mapped to GJ and GK, so if it's not a perfect line break, <laughs> it doesn't work. Oh man. Can it even be stopped now? It can, okay, good. Ah, the joys of uh, live demoing via screencast when everything is slow. So you can see like how when the lines aren't too long, it does work how it should. <laughs> uh, but this is exactly what I did to get all of my subscriptions. You export it, you, you clean the data, you format it the way you want, you have the headings the way you want them. And then eventually, once it was formatted the way I had it here, you can simply copy and paste this into your Newsboat URLs. And I will show you what mine looks like. Oops, wrong direction. Zoom in, please. And so then your URLs will look something like this where you just have all of these channel IDs and all of these XML entries. And that's exactly how I did it. Subscription manager, export it, clean it, copy it, paste it. And now if I entered Newsboat, I have my tag for YouTube with 189 subscriptions. And I can go through here and I can watch my videos the way I want them. I want to. I can go in, I can go there, and then I can do comma V, and it will load my video into MPV. Eventually. And I can watch in my own, in MPV, I can watch on my own computer, I don't have to open a browser, and I have my Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, blogs, journals, articles, everything in an RSS feed in Newsboat. So with this, you can set up some scripts, you can say how you want things done, even podcasts. I have Pod, uh, Podboat going, I can download podcasts, listen to them on MPV or MPD, and you can have all of your content delivered to you in a single format. You can script on it because this is all terminal applications, and you can have the output going where you want it to go, and you can do everything on your own machine.
You don't have to have a browser open. You don't have to have any sort of complex GUI and you can easily just enjoy your content, filter through what you, what you care about, what you don't. And for those that are vulnerable to clickbait, you know, you're not going to have all of these like graphical images unless you like really tried to set it up that way. And there are some that have been able to set it up using things like URXVT, um, Ranger Image Pre Previewer, or just other, other software um, working together. But you can get everything you want in a single format and then have it scripted to output to whatever program you want to see it in. And this is the way that I am now consuming all the content that I consume on a daily basis. It also helps me keep more focused because then I can go through all of my feeds, quickly say, eh, I don't care about that, market is red, go through what actually is unread, and then things that I don't care about. I can, all right, I finished everything and I'm done and I can go and do something more productive. I don't get sucked into the black hole of YouTube's recommendation algorithm unless I'm like bored and I want to. So this is kind of failed because of my uh, current key bindings, not because of the macro. So, I mean, if you ran that macro the way that I did, it would work for you. This is just because of my stupid key bindings. Um, but you can see how it would format like these records like this, and you could just copy and paste them. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you make use of it. You can easily grab all of your YouTube content that way. And in the next video I do on Newsboat, I will show you some of the cool customization that you can do to just improve your reading, watching, just consuming content experience. So in the meantime, enjoy being able to give YouTube the finger and just have everything you want in your RSS feed and off of their website. So enjoy.